Do you love old cars and trucks? Join us on Bring Them Back to Life, where we search the salvage yards and backyards of America to find that gold mine of a parts car or that restorable gem in the rough. Come with us down memory lane as we elevate the status of our salvage yards to outdoor museums of automotive history. I found it. I found hillbillies. And there's his daily driver. Right here next to the road. And there's his sign. Hillbillies Bentonville Junkyard. And wouldn't you know it, he'd be driving a classic. Well, there's another one from the same era, 60 to 65, 66, and that's a 30. But now and then it's been used. Got a rifle on the back. But like he told me, everything's for sale. Yeah, not that old, but it's kind of cute. Don't shoot, see too many Chevettes anymore. Well, that one says 6100 series. It's probably a 54 or 5, 55 first series. And it's a little dump. Looks like the whole unit's there, too. It does have the split windshield. Four-door hardtop Chrysler Imperial. Tinted glass. Oh, the power plant's going. But there's a lot of good stuff on this Imperial. Right next to a what I think is a 66 Impala. Um, I'm sure it was an Impala, or it is an Impala. Power plant's gone on this. It was crashed in the left front. Probably why it came in. Well, that's a four-door hardtop. Still got, well, quite a bit of trim on it. Rear bumper looks good. Now here's an old Plymouth. The rear bumper's gone, but the trunk deck is there. It says Plymouth. The tail lights are both there. Kind of hard to see them through the through the brush there. There they are. 
It is the four door. All the side trim is on the passenger side. The doors aren't smashed. This rear one's got a dent in it. Now on the right front fender. Oh, I just stepped in a hole. I'm okay. It says V8. The whole grill is here. Bump is here. It's hard to see it all. It says V8, and there it is. There's a V8 in there. So this is nice, nice parts to pick off of this thing. It doesn't look that rotten, but like I said, it is a four-door. There's a lot of nice stuff. Nice grill, bumpers. Headlight trim. And next to it, 53 or 4 Chevrolet two door post. It's hard to tell what's good on it. I can't get that close. Oh, well, here's another pick em up 60 to 66. Mostly here, C10, short bed step side. There is a V8 in there, who knows what? Any small block. But there it is, short bed step side with the spare tire well. Dash looks pretty complete. And then two vehicles over. Here's another one. Short bed step side, but no spare tire holder. 60 to 66. C10. Standard shift, there's a clutch pedal. And this one is a six cylinder, still there. Generator still there, so it's the earlier model. More good pieces or project here at Hillbillies. And there's his sign. Hillbillies Bentonville Junkyard. And there's his sign. Hillbillies Bentonville Junkyard. And there's his sign. Hillbillies Bentonville Junkyard. Well, that looks like about a 70 or 71 Buick. It's up on that flatbed, so it's not on the ground. I can tell by the rear bumper, about a 71 Buick. The, the frame is probably good, because it's been protected. And it could be used for a Chevelle, maybe a Cutlass. And uh, I can't tell what's inside. But I guess if you were to call Hillbillies and ask them about that, orange Buick that's on the flatbed old Ford. He could tell you what's left on it that's good. Two-door hard top. 
Galaxy 500. I'm walking in all the weeds now so I can show everybody what's here. I think it's a 66. There's the back. I can't tell what's up front, there's too much stuff. But it's a two door hardtop. It hasn't been destroyed by rocks and garbage, it's all here. Let's see if I can get around this junk truck. See the nose. Or maybe an insignia from an engine. Ah, I see it on the fender. 390. The whole front end is on the car. The grill, the bumper, the headlights, the headlight rings, the fenders. And I, and I see the insignia. I'll see if I can zero in on it. There you go. And of course, I don't have any idea if it's still in it. I am going to try to get closer because the door is ajar. Somebody's already been here. Looking. I hope that tire I just lifted don't roll into another county. Oh, okay. It's dead. Let's look in here. What can we see? Oh, will you look at that. This Galaxy 500 with a 390 has a clutch pedal. So it was a three on a tree. Cool, huh? I mean, it's... Not that bad looking in there for being out in the wilderness here. Does need some floor work. The carpet's kind of rotten. There's a hole. The bench seat is here, back and bottom and back. Door panels, knobs. Only the ashtray's been pulled out. Even the radio still in the dash. Well, for you Ford guys, I'd, I'd definitely call. Mr. Hillbilly and ask him about this Galaxy 500. If it's not worth bringing back to life, it's sure worth something for parts. Well, I spotted this hardtop over in the weeds. The roof line and rear window shape looked familiar to me, so I came over to take a closer look. Well, it's not a Chevelle as I thought it might be. But I think it's the sister Buick to that one that's on the flatbed that's orange. Because it's also a two-door coupe. Except this one has the nose partially off. And there's a fender that's the same color. And there's a clue right there that it was probably a Buick. The two of them could make a pretty good start toward a project. Well, I'm on my way back into the office to <clears throat> talk to Mr. Hillbilly, and I spotted this on the floor on the way in, and I didn't see a 56 Chevy anywhere in the yard today, but that's an indication that there was one here at one time. I know, I own a lot of them. Be right back with Mr. Hillbilly. We are in the front office, and I'm talking with Mr. Hillbilly from Hillbilly's Junkyard. Welcome to Bring Them Back to Life. <laughs> hey, glad to have you here. You do a lot of good videos, and we're glad to be in one. 
but yeah everything's for sale we got old stuff new stuff as you can see from some of the pictures on uh, the video he took and feel free to call us anytime for any of your parts needs if I don't have it I'll try to find it for you and where are we today you Billy's Bentonville junkyard Bentonville Virginia thank you very much sir thank you Denny Hey everybody, I'm Andrew from EMP Shield and today I'm excited to show you our new technology. Our EMP protection devices for your home, vehicle, solar system, generator, and ham radio systems. With over 37 models that can be used around the world, our family of EMP protection devices installs easily in minutes. Being employed this year by federal organizations and electrical companies, the EMP Shield has been tested at Keystone Compliance, a federally approved DOD testing facility. Also serving as one of the world's fastest whole home surge protection devices working in less than one nanosecond, the EMP Shield will protect against electromagnetic pulses, coronal mass ejections, lightning, and all forms of power surges. Proven to withstand more than 40 EMP strikes with zero degradation, the EMP Shield is also one of the world's strongest surge protectors, capable of withstanding over 100,000 amps. To learn more about our EMP protection devices, ask us any questions you may have, read about EMP protection in our EMP library, to check out articles about EMP protection, or to just read the reviews that other people have written about our devices, go to EMPShield.com. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew from EMP Shield, and today Patrick and I are going to be installing our device into a vehicle from the Coffee County Sheriff's Department. The first step to installing the EMP Shield is to find a spot inside your engine compartment that you will place the device. Place the EMP Shield in the clean location and press and hold the shield in place. Be sure to place the EMP Shield in a location where you'll be able to see the green light. Place the connector of the red wire on the positive terminal and tighten the nut to keep the wires in place. Next, we will install the ground wire, which is the green wire. Install this wire to any piece of metal inside the engine compartment that attaches to the chassis of the vehicle. The last step of this installation is to install the negative wire, which is the black wire. This wire will go on the negative side of the battery, which often has the minus sign as its symbol. This is how this police vehicle's final installation looks with the positive, negative, and ground wire. If everything's been installed correctly, you'll be able to see the green light on the device, which means that the device is actively protecting your vehicle. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.